Welcome to the Author to Authority podcast. And today I'm excited because if the pre-conversation Judy and I have just had is any indication of how this episode is going to go today, you audience are in for a treat. And, you know, when I I looked at today's topic, Secrets for Keeping Your Message Seen in Evergreen, you know, I think sometimes that we don't understand the importance, first of all, of evergreen, but secondly, the importance of your message and how the consistency of it is just going to help you build your business bigger, better, stronger, and faster. Judy, I want to welcome you to the show. Judy is on a mission to help nonfiction authors, which is our audience, make real money from their books. Her signature program for authors gives them the foundation to grow their visibility, credibility, and income, and do it with generosity and grace organically. She learned reframing and resilience as part of her healing from ovarian cancer, an experience that profoundly changed her life and business. Her workshops and one-to-one mentoring have inspired hundreds of authors to build awareness about themselves, their books, and their businesses. Judy, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you, Kim. I'm so happy to be here. And we're both warm and safe in our in our studio, but it's kind of <laughs> wet outside at the moment. <laughs> well, what on your end? We're actually having a sunny day here. So as soon as we're done, I'll actually open my curtains up again uh, so I can get some sunshine in here. Uh, uh, fortunately, uh, if I open them, all you'll see is sunshine. You won't see me. So they got to stay closed while I record it. No yep. sunshine for Kim today. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you know, Judy, I want to just start off by asking you probably the obvious question. And, you know, how important is it in keeping your message, you know, seen and evergreen? Well, think about this. Um I can name two of the top 10 uh, nonfiction business books that were published close to 30 years ago. And I'll bet you know at least one of them, and that is The Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. Now, why do you think we all still know that one? Because the company behind the book, not just the author, has continued to put out little gem on that topic for the last 30 years. And you know what? If you have a nonfiction book and it's got value and wisdom, it didn't suddenly turn bad like a carton of milk. It still got a gift to give to people who didn't know about it before they encountered it. And you never know when someone's going to come upon your message. You know, it's funny. We were, we were talking just before the show about the fact that I moved across the country. And one of the things we did, because with the movers, we were paying by the pound. So everything in the house went under the scrutiny of, do I want to pay per pound to move this thing? And so one of the things that, you know, I had to go through, we'd been in the house for 30 years was I had a lot of books and it's, it's all, it's, it's almost sacrilegious. It's almost taboo. Like it's almost completely forbidden to throw out a book. Mm -hmm. So I think there was one or two I did throw out because they were just so falling apart. Art. nobody could use them but every other book i made sure either they went to someone i donated them somewhere you know the salvation army got a lot of my books and you know when, when you just said there about the fact that you know a book can just sit there and i i think about how many times in my own life you know a book was sitting on my shelf like going through those books when i was getting ready to move there was quite a few of them was like oh, i read yeah you know i can get and then there was other books it was like i had read them before 
And it was like probably 10, 15 years ago, but I'm like, I forgot about this book, man. No, this book's coming with me. It's going back on my shelf and I, it's going back on my, my reading list and I am reading that thing again. And so you just never know with a book and even eBooks, they're sitting on your Kindle and you go flip your Kindle one day and you're like, Oh, I forgot about that book. So you are so right. The, the power of books are incredible. Well, and you know what? When you read something, even if you reread it, you're at a different place in your life now than when you first read it. Yeah. I, mean, I think we've all got books in our libraries that, you know, we go back to all the time. I mean, I'm looking, this is terrible. I have, it's, this is a family, this is a family trait. We all have massive amounts of books. And I heard what you said. And because I've had several careers, I had to go, okay, am I still using this? And I'm not using this anymore. Can someone else use it? And I, and I donated the books too. But I'm looking up here. I've got, I'm looking at Book Yourself Solid, Blink, uh, Fierce Conversations. There, I mean, there's just own your own niche. You know, my friend Stephanie Chanley, I met Stephanie right about the time she released that book. And that's how we became friends. But you know, every time you every time you go through and do research, you're gonna find something new. So you can keep your message out there taking a phrase, it might be your chapter title, it might be the did you know something in your book and you share it and then you share it again. People love to discover secrets and you've got a bunch of them. Every author has them. And if you're a nonfiction author, think about that. How can you continue to share your value? Well, I mean, think about it. If, if you've got a half decent nonfiction book, anywhere from 100 to 200 pages, you know, you're probably looking anywhere from 25 to 50,000 words. I'm sure you can find a few that you can share out to people from your book. But you know, the, the funny thing is, is um, I haven't promoted my own book out as much. I've been more using it to give it away and things like that. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm going to be doing a new series of books. And so I recently went back and read the first one. And I realized I'm going to change it up a little bit to reflect mm -hmm. the new series. But I thought, man, I've grown and I've changed, right? And so there was the the topics were so still so relevant, but some of the things I had written then, I thought, man, I've grown since then, and and there's a newness that I could I could bring to this. I could revise it and you know update it, and uh, and so you know my writing list is really long right mm -hmm. now, and I'm like, oh man, I got to get to all of this stuff. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get up extra early in the morning to give myself more writing time. Because sometimes as a publisher, it is hard for me to work on my own stuff because I spend a lot of time working on everybody else's stuff. Uh, oh, I don't know about that. Yeah, that's, like, that's kind of me, too. I mean, it's really funny. I got elected to president of our Redwood Writers Club two years ago. And this is my second term. And... I thought, well, that'll be great. That'll help me get more. No, I spend all my time, my extra time go seems to go into how can I support the members? How can I educate them? I'm telling them all the stuff to do that I need to be doing that I'm not necessarily doing. But you know what? Podcasting is such a gift to authors because this is the perfect opportunity to share those bits of wisdom. And yeah. like a nonfiction book, podcasts are evergreen. And that's yes. part of my mantra is to educate authors who had never thought about using a podcast. And in fact, I'm working on a new program with my friend, Brett Ridgway. He has the spotlight on speaking. I interviewed know. Brett. I know. And is this crazy? I mean, it's such a small world. He knows everybody. But you know what? We both are in agreement about that. Well, all three of us are. We're in agreement that you can use podcasting to help establish yourself, to help get your mm. work out there. But those evergreen episodes, 
you can now use them to get people to find out about your book. Use your book to get people to find out that you do podcasting. And you can, you know, like do a highlight reel of your episodes, whether you're a host or a guest. And I think that, oh my God, that is one of the most brilliant strategies to get your name out there and to get more opportunities to speak and to get people interested in what you know and how you help them. Okay, Judy, I looked down for a moment because you said something and I went, oh man, that's such a brilliant idea. I mean, I've I've always thought of a podcast highlight reel, but I thought, oh, I'd pick guests. And I'm like, man, I've said some good stuff. I should do a podcast highlight reel for me. Yes, absolutely. And you know what? It's just like when you said you're going, what you just told us, I'm going to write a new series and this is what I'm doing. If you did a if you did a, a short series of solo episodes where you talk about what you're doing, do yeah. you know how many people would go, oh my gosh, I could do that. And now I've got more information and more material, and now I've got more books. You know what the funny thing is, Judy, especially as a publisher, here's two things I've noticed, or at least yeah, two things. First of all, most people have a tendency towards either writing or speaking. They're usually better at one or the other. Mm -hmm. And so I found with me, I've, I've learned how to speak. I've done Toastmasters. You know, I've done 400 podcasts. I've spoken on stage. But when it comes to creating content, I will type over speaking it out every single time. I write better when I when I'm when I'm in that creative flow. Yeah. Even a lot of my speeches and that, I will write it out first. It's just for me, that's that's the way that I, I create best is actually through through the writing. Now, mind you, my typing is atrocious even after all of these years. I never took typing in school. And I'm always going back and fixing. I mean, you would think I wouldn't know how to spell from my typing, but uh, I'm actually a pretty good speller. But yeah, I prefer to actually write. So I would actually write it all out first, then record it. Now, for some people, it's the reverse. Their, their genius is in the spoken word, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, my advice to the audience is go with what you do best. Just because somebody else does it one way doesn't mean you have to. You find the way that works for you and then I'll let your genius flow. I am in complete agreement with you. And I tend to do drafts by speaking them. Um and partly, partly because I think faster than I keyboard, even though I'm pretty, I'm, I'm, am pretty fast. I did, I did learn how to type. Oh God. <laughs> I learned on a manual typewriter to tell you how long ago that was. And I never thought. Oh, I, I was alive when those things were around. <laughs> oh, oh, I know. And it, it, I mean, it cracks me up because those of you who've only used a computer keyboard have no idea oh you had strong fingers but but you're absolutely right the you have to use the tools that fit you and mm. then you'll be happy not trying to use tools that don't work i mean that's kind of mm. my whole philosophy about book marketing if you are trying to do something that is inconsistent with who you are it's not authentic. It feels, I mean, I'm not talking about being, you know, trying to stretch a little bit. I'm talking about if something really is not in your wheelhouse and it's not something you love, you're going to sound like a goof every time you do it. You're going to be, yeah. you'll, you're going to be uncomfortable. And if your intention is to communicate and connect You've got to do it in the way that is authentic to you. Yeah. So I, I love what you said. That that makes total sense. And well, you I bet you know this too. They they have done uh scientists have been studying the neurology 
of how we communicate. And part of part of the physical act of writing, and I'm talking with a pen. Yep. I'm not talking about keyboarding. It's very different than when you use a computer. And in fact, I can pretty much, if I wanted to do this, we could be talking and I can mindlessly be capturing it almost verbatim without a lot of mistakes. There, I mean, there might be some, you know, spelling errors, but when you put pen to paper, it accesses different parts of your brain because you're thinking in words and symbols and that's connecting the right and the left hemisphere. So I, I love it. You know, give it a try if you haven't done it. When I first started creating content, I used to write it out by hand and then type it out. And the only reason I switched was because it was just making the process way too long. Mm -hmm. And plus I can correct a lot easier on a computer than I can in writing. Yep. But I'm going to, I'm just going to stop you there for a second, Judy. I'm going to share one quick thought and then we have to go to an ad break. But, you know, you, you, we were talking about repurposing that content in the highlight reels and mm -hmm. I can't remember the name of it, but if you Google it, if you're appearing on podcasts or doing videos or things like that, there's actually software out there now where you can go upload the video and it will analyze it and it will pull out clips. Now, oh, that right. being said, it uses the AI. Now, sometimes it's really good. Sometimes it's not. But I have I have used them, and mm -hmm. generally, you know, usually there's you know if they're giving you 10, 15 clips, there's usually one clip that you can really that I think is like really excellent. Like there's other ones that are, you know, they're good, but they, it, they usually find one, but a lot of them, you can adjust it. So a couple words here, there on either side. So audience, oh. that's just a way of being able to repurpose your content. And there are some softwares now where you can actually just manually do it. So if you, if you go through and you time out, when you set certain things, you can upload it into the software and it'll create the horizontal, it'll create the vertical ones for you. It puts headlines, subtitles Ooh. for you. I yeah. And I can't that. remember what it's called. So just Google it because there's lots of them. Okay. Oh my goodness. Crazy, isn't it? Some of the tools that we have that can make life easier. But you know what? The thing too is if you pick something and you like it, get really good at it. Go deep. Don't keep trying a hundred different things because actually you'll save time. You'll get better. And until something else is out there that, you know, is, is really a significant improvement, don't worry about it. So we're going to stop for a quick ad break. Audience, I have something new for you. If you have been wondering if you are ready to write a book that's going to convert readers into clients and build your business, so listen in to this ad. Writing and publishing a book that converts readers into client and scales your business is hard, but it doesn't have to be. Get my free checklist at bit.ly forward slash create and scale that will show you what you need to do to have your book become a well-converting lead generating tool. Welcome back. Judy, we've just been kind of going all over the place. I've been loving this conversation. I do want to touch a little bit. I, I want to give you a couple of minutes to share your expertise, but just before you do that, because I know you've come prepared with some from few practical things, but could you just take a couple of minutes and just share a bit of, of your story with us? I know you have a really powerful one. Well, this is really, well, this is my anniversary month. Ten years ago, I was just, uh, I had just been diagnosed with ovarian cancer and I had been ignoring the symptoms for quite a long time before that happened because I'm really healthy and I worked out all the time. So I was about to celebrate my 60th birthday. And instead, I was getting ready to start my chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. What I discovered, however, was this was my reset button. I found out all the times I had been giving people support, volunteering in the community, showing up, people returned the gift and mm. helped helped me 
I asked for help. I didn't disguise the fact that I was ill because I knew, well, let's face it. I knew I was, my hair was, my hair fell out. Um, the type of, the, the type of uh, chemicals that they were using. I said, is it all hundred percent? Yeah. hundred percent. Everybody loses their hair. So I said, I'm going to be bald. So, I mean, it's not like I can fake that. And what I, I found is I really paired away people and well, tasks and things that didn't bring me joy. And I, I turned inward a lot and I was able to set boundaries. So I, so I did that. But as I was going through the whole experience, which I knew had a beginning, a middle and an end, right? Yes. Beginning, middle and end. I said to myself, okay, what can I do? And this is exactly what I said to the, to the ER doctor when they told, they didn't know what kind of cancer I had, but he said, you have cancer. And I said, well, how, how what do I do to get well? I didn't, I didn't go pity party time. And that was the way I approached the entire experience. What can I do to help myself? What do I need yeah. to focus on? And through that, I got a new appreciation for what my body could do for paying attention to it. And I applied those same gifts that I learned after I got, I got physically stronger and healthier because I I'm healthier now than I was before. It's the same thing that authors need to do. You need to be resilient. You're not going to be perfect every time. Things are going to happen. Stuff's going to show up. And you've got to learn, like I did, what you're going to say yes to and what you're going to say no to. Yeah. And I think yeah. it was really important. And I also learned I had to do it my own way. And so I did some things that then turned out to be the coming trend, but the the research hadn't been out yet. I exercised all during my my experience not quite at the level that I had done before, but I did. I started eating. I thought I was eating really well, but I found out there were some things in my diet that needed to go away because sugar is a major contributor to cell growth that you don't want. And I started saying yes to more happiness. I started a gratitude practice and you know, so it was learning to do things in a new way and to, and have different to have different expectations, but taking small steps consistently over time. And here I am today. I've got arms that I didn't have before cancer. <laughs> and, and you know what? I feel a lot better because it's easier for me to they focused on the good stuff. Yeah. I love it, Judy. Love it. Love it. Love it. You know, you, you mentioned the word consistency and that's, I think that's one of the keys when you're an author is the consistency factor. I, I like to tell a little story about, um, you know, how, how, how do you get momentum to work for you? You become best friends with consistency. Because mm -hmm. consistency and, and momentum, they're like husband and wife, and she's the gatekeeper, and you don't get to momentum unless you are really close to consistency, and you have to prove yourself to her first. But once you do, when she introduces you to momentum, well, man, you better hang on because things start to move in fast. Oh, absolutely. I, that is absolutely true. Um, it, and it's funny because a lot of people think, Oh, I've got to be number one bestseller. And I'm going, and are you continuing to sell books? Do people still know about you? I don't focus yeah. on that one event. I'm looking yeah, at yeah. a lot of events over time. And you know what? Yeah. A lot of authors are going, well, yeah, if you want to throw a lot of money at being number one, you can do that. 
if you don't have a, a huge number of people who are going to buy your book on, on day one, but it's better to focus on how am I going to get my message out many times and again and reach more yeah. people. So consistency is, is totally the direction that I want to help instill the habit of consistency in the authors that I work with. And when they do that, you're absolutely right. It's like miracles happen. I mean, like you said, you've done 400 episodes. Well, that didn't happen because you said, oh, I'm going to do a podcast. And then you did one episode. Nope. <laughs> you planned and you keep doing it. And you have to keep doing it even when you're going, well, this is maybe not as much fun, but thinking about why did you write the book? Mm -hmm. Whose life can you save by sharing your story? Yeah, and exactly. I'm even talking about business books. You can save a life. And, and I know this to be true. When I think about myself in my 30s, I, I, had, I had a struggle with depression most of my life. This is this is pre all the good stuff that happened later. But there was a period I was just really in the dumps. And what did my my mother, smart lady who knows, you know, because the whole family, we we're a bunch of readers. She said, go find a go find a book that will help you because I don't know what to tell you anymore. And you know what books, two books showed up? Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway by Suzanne Jeffers. And the artist's way. Those two books. And you know what? It shifted my perspective. I started doing something consistently. I hated morning pages. I mean, let's, that is not when I write the best. I mean, I do it now, but I couldn't do it then. I just hated it. I thought it was nasty. It was just vile. I did not want to do it. But I said, you know what? I don't want to feel the way I'm feeling. So yep. let me try it. And, yeah. and then learning that my fear of whatever it was, was never going to go away, but I could make friends with it. Then I started being able to stand up in front of people and I didn't worry about that. And if I felt nervous, I would acknowledge it. Who knew? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it's funny, you talk about business books making a difference. And I mean, I can tell you for a fact that there have been books that have changed the trajectory of my life because they changed the trajectory of my business. Yep. You know, um, I remember the first time I read um, The Go-Giver by Bob Berg. Um, actually, Bob. Bob was on my podcast. He was my first guest uh, wow. on the show. and. Um, you know, he, he's been such a blessing in my life. And, you know, there's been books, um, 12 Pillars, Jim Rohn, Chris, Chris Widener. Like, I mean, there's been so many books over the years that just, you know, they changed my perspective. They changed my mindset. They let me see things. I mean, I'm, I'm reading one right now um, that talks about 10 xing your business as opposed to 2 xing your business. And what does the mind shift set shift have to look like to 10 times your business? Mm -hmm. And how once you've got that mindset shift, it's actually easier to 10 times your business than two times your business. And I'm like, oh, this book is challenging me to the core. Oh, my God. And I, I'm thinking it through and, you know, reading it. And, yeah, I, you know, I got to admit something to you, Judy. It's really funny. As a publisher, I read so much. I find lately it's hard for me to read books because I just spend so much time reading and reviewing. And, and the other thing is, I don't know about you, but sometimes I can't get the analytical side out of my brain. I'm tr I, I can't read to enjoy anymore because I'm, I'm analyzing this thing and I'm thinking... <laughs> I'm thinking, okay, if I were to talk to this person, oh, so I, I'm having to retrain my brain to read and not go into that analytical mode, not be thinking through all of the things that we could do to make this book better and, and, and try to, you know, to learn, but it's definitely quite a journey. Oh, 
I was a graphic designer for um, for close to half my life. And if someone shows me something, that's I look at the I look at the layout first. I can't even get there. And it is so funny. It is so, that, what you just said. I totally get it. When I'm reading something, I'm going, what? Why did they do that? Why did they make that look that way? Why did they say it that way? They could have done it and it would have, you know, they could have used one sentence to, you know, do this. I get it. I get, oh, I even at the movies, I would go, who did that font for the title? What the heck were they thinking? But you know what? If it, for those of you and I both are, obviously we're visual as well as auditory. And I'm also a kinesthetic. I mean, kinesthetic is probably my my golden spot for learning. So it's integrating all of those things. But you know what? If there's something that interrupts you know, getting the meaning of something because it looks ugly or it's improperly constructed, that you have to think about that. And I I get it. I some and so sometimes I'll listen to an audiobook instead of reading it on paper for that very reason, because I won't be as critical yeah. what's going on. I've tried audio books. I, I just, I mean, I, I've admitted this to, to the audience before, so this is not going to be a huge revelation to them. I, I don't even listen to a lot of podcasts. I am not an audio person, but one of the things I recognized in building my business was the fact that, you know, like you said, you've got people who are visual, people who are audio, people who are kinesthetic. So, you know, I have focused on creating content that reaches all those people. So the podcast is on video and audio. You know, I write books for those who are the more visual people, the readers like me, right? Because I recognize that if I just do things that are only in my own that I enjoy, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, there's so many people I'm going to be missing out on, but oh, audio book, man, five minutes. I'd be oh, like, <laughs> isn't that Aud audio puts me to sleep. <laughs> oh, I really, really get it. I really get it. You know, and it depends on the book and there are some uh -huh. books this, Oh, this is a little tidbit for those of you who are out there, authors. Hello. If you only have your book in one format, what the heck are you thinking? Yeah. For that very reason. And people who listen to an audiobook are far more likely to buy either the ebook or the print book, or they might buy all of them because if they really like you. So now you've made three sales instead of one. Plus, you now have content that people are going to consume different, might be different places. It might be at different times, but, oh, it's, it's just brilliant. And one more little, little thought. If you have a business book, do you have a workbook that goes with it? So if you, if you yeah. are, could you now, so one book becomes two, becomes three, becomes four. Yeah. Simple. Yeah. You already got the content. Now, how else are you going to make it available? And you can turn that book into a podcast too. Yeah. Judy, we've got about a minute and a half left. And I, I was really interested. So can you take maybe about 30 seconds mm -hmm. and talk about, you know, what is it that you do for authors? Because we didn't really get a chance to touch on that. <laughs> Well, I think you kind of get the idea. I'm an idea generator. And so I work with authors where they are to help them customize their roadmap to success, to become a book to money maker author. And so I meet you where you are. I help you craft your platform so that it fits you because it's not one size fits all. So I do one-to-one -one coaching. I do group programs. I do workshops and training. And I've got a lot of tools available, but I help you find the ones that match you with your authentic voice. And I'm a, I'm organic overpaid first. 
every step of the way. Judy, I love it. Okay, we've got about a minute or so left, so I'll, I'll let you have the final few words. Can you share a final thought with us? And if the audience has enjoyed listening to you, how can they connect with you? Well, my final thought is, if you do something every day, you're going to see a result. And case in point, just like if you go to the gym once, that doesn't do anything. If you write every day for as little as five minutes, think about five minutes over the course of a year. You've now got a book. And you could share your thoughts as you're writing the book to help build your platform and to find out if people are resonating with you. To connect with me, you can go to book marketingmentor.com. And right on the homepage, you're going to see some gifts under resources. And I've got it um, for those who are listening in real time or this month, I have an intensive coming up and we're going to create your book to money maker playbook right in that intensive. Love it. Love it. Love it. Thank you so much, Judy. Audience, if you've enjoyed today's episode, I highly recommend that you go check out episode 445, How to Sell More with Story with Robert Hughes. Yeah, you know the routine. If you're on YouTube, my daughter has placed the thumbnail here somewhere. Uh, if you're on your podcast app, we are currently episode 474, so you're going to have to scan back about 30 episodes on your podcast app, but I guarantee you it will be another one that will enhance and uh, give you a slightly different perspective on what we covered today. Thank you so much for listening, and we will see you on the very next episode. Bye now. <laughs>